Welcome to livingpianos.com. I'm Robert Estrin with a kind of a personal story today of how to achieve consistency in your piano playing. You know, there are many, many aspects to this, such as, of course, uh, revisiting the score, which I've talked about in other videos, learning the piece, practice performing, all of these techniques to have solidity in your playing. But what I'm going to talk today about is something that transcends all of that. You know, growing up, I actually played both piano and French horn, and I spent equal time on both instruments. And I had the good fortune of connecting with a phenomenal man by the name of Hugh Cowden. Hugh Cowden was my French horn teacher. He specialized in low horn. He was a fourth horn player. That's right. Horn sections are, are like no other section in the orchestra because you've got four independent parts. First and second horn are kind of a duet with the first horn playing high and the second horn playing low generally. The third horn is another high part and the fourth horn is another low part. And when the section is playing together, that fourth horn anchors the whole section and is a glorious sound. And Hugh Cowden played in the Boston Symphony, the Chicago Symphony, the New York Philharmonic. And it was such a joy working with him. And he would actually come to my home and we would spend the whole afternoon together. It was unbelievable. And if you know anything about the French horn, it's so different from piano in almost every respect. Uh, there's much more physiology involved in regards to tone production because on the piano, the tone is produced by the, the hammers hitting the strings. On the French horn, it's your lips and these muscles tire out after a while. So lessons would consist of going from one thing to the next, you know, concertos, sonatas, a bunch of orchestral excerpts, you know, very hard parts of uh, certain symphonies, just, you know, solos from Tchaikovsky and, and Wagner horn calls. And sometimes in the course of a lesson, there'd be something that was just giving me problems. So he kept coming back to those things that give me problems and trying to overcome them in the course of the lesson. Then we'd play duets together. Then we'd go into my father's studio if he wasn't in there and play records of great horn players and comment on that. It was an unbelievable experience working with him. So here's what would happen so much of the time. I'd get to a certain point in the lesson where my chops were just shot. I couldn't play anymore because this happens on French horn. Any of you who are wind players, particularly brass players, you know that you get to a certain point and you just, your lips can't do it anymore. You just don't have the chops anymore. And all you can do is let them recover and pick it up the next day. But no, Hugh Cowden wouldn't let me do that. He'd go, Robert, use the air. And then he starts singing. He, he, he was a very entertaining character. And so what he would make me do in these times that I just didn't think I could do it, I couldn't maintain that level of consistency anymore. He would have me work physically way harder by supporting even more than I thought was possible. And at first the sound seemed kind of fuzzy, but I would just use so much energy and do everything and the attacks making them really strong and using the air and the breath and everything I knew about French horn playing multiplied by 10. And at the end of one of these four hour marathon lessons, when I thought I was done long ago, I could play on a high level again. How is it possible? Well, this is the secret to consistency. When you are feel that you're down and out and your mind isn't doing what it needs to do, your fingers aren't doing, you must rely upon what you know to be the truths of your instrument and double down on everything and use that concentration. Make sure you're sitting properly, the right hand position. Think about the music and the phrasing and get into that flow. Make yourself do the things you know that work. Even when your mind is tired and you've been, you think you're beyond and you can't do it. You can, you actually can overcome your natural limitations by just working harder, not just physically, but mentally reinforcing what works when you absolutely need it most. 
and you will be shocked that such a thing is possible. And if it's possible in the French horn, when the blood no longer wants to return to the lips, the muscles are so fatigued that they won't vibrate with the way you normally play. On the piano, you absolutely can do it because, you know, fatigue on the piano, it, you, your fingers tend to regenerate rather quickly. Uh, you know, where you, it's not like you play to a certain point and you just can't play anymore. At least I have never suffered that on the piano. Usually if I'm tired, wait a couple of minutes and you know, physically it's back again. So it's really more of a mental challenge on the piano than a physical for most people. Now there are certainly exceptions out there. So I want you to try, next time you think you've reached the end of what you can do, it's just not happening. Just, if it's the piece you've played before in a high level, you know, of course revisit the score and, and practice and, and, you know, slowly and go through things. But in a performance situation, you can get it up if you just rely upon the things that you know work. Go for it in an extreme way. Reaffirm your concentration and see what's possible for you when you think you've lost all consistency in your playing. And I'm very curious for all of you out there to let me know how this works for you. Again, this is livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. I'm Robert Estrin. Thank you all your subscribers and ringing the bell and the thumbs up. It helps to bring these videos to more people. See you next time.